Hello everyone, and welcome to the video. So what we're here today is a Casablanca Broadway limited ceiling fan. This isn't a ordinary one. This one is actually Intel Touch right here. Just a tag from June of 1985, and I don't have the wire nut on. To be its exact date, it's from June of 1985, June 26th, 1985, and it was the 462nd fan made that day. Um, yes, this was the one on eBay that went for crazy money. It was like $820, and then I had to pay um, $80 for shipping, like, with tax and everything. It was like 1000 bucks. I went crazy, but all I have to say is that no one bought it for me. I had to buy it myself because no one would have uh, chipped in on spending $1,000 $1, for a fan. And I have my... Um, YouTube bank account set up, so every month I get a paycheck from YouTube, depending on my revenue and everything else. But yeah, here it is. Um, yeah, the guy um, like coded the blades, like which one went to what. So this one is one, and the one is right there. Um, but yeah, the reason why the switch caps off, it's because I've been having some uh, issues with this fan. I uh, had it all apart earlier today. Switch cap is uh, right there, but yeah. Um, so the board was going on the other one. The capacitor had like a huge bulge in it, and it just wasn't working properly. And I uh, got a um, new uh, board in LDM because it didn't come with an LDM. I got it from Tommy Bodden, um, the fan page, and I don't know if the board was messed up because it seems a little funky. Um, you'll see when I, um, demonstrate it because, um, I have it on right now because if I don't, um, so it'll just do this and I don't want to show the fan like that. So I don't know why the chimes sound like that, but yeah, it's in a work of process, work in process. But yeah, anyways, we've been um, talking about this fan for almost two minutes, so let's get started. Okay, here's speed one. But this fan is not supposed to act like that. So this fan, um, so it's so it's stuck on flick mode, which is um, really weird for these um, older fans because like it's not weird. It's like kind of like a common thing with these RMM1 boards because I got a replacement RMM1 board, and I see why it acts a little funky at sometimes. And um, the only way to reverse the fan is if you uh, do the flick mode. And it takes like five minutes to reverse the fan because other than that, it would be stuck on up, updraft. And then there were a few uh, wires missing in the switch housing from the um, the plug going to the LDM. LDM is light drive module, which I think that operates the flick mode and your light kit. But other than the board being funky, um, fan runs good. Bearings are noisy because. The guy said that uh, this fan was running in, well, not running, but it was sitting in his basement for quite some time. Um, he did have the original box for that at one point, but he had a flood in his basement, so that's what messed the box up. And, yeah, so with this Broadway, um, so the um, later ones, they were known as the Commodore Vanderbilt. I think that started in, like, around the 90s. And it had different tip blades, kind of like a wing tip. Um, and then they had bigger blades. But they also went between Commodore and Vanderbilt and Broadway Limited between the 80s as well. Because there is this uh, fan that I saw on eBay. I'll see if I can try to find a picture of it. I'll show it on the screen. And it was an IntelliTouch, one of these, but with big blades. And it said Broad uh, Commodore Vanderbilt. There's a Speed 2. So... This is the second IT um, Broadway that's on YouTube. The other ones use cardboard box, variable speed, or slumber quiet. These slumber quiet ones 
utilize the the uh, K55 ones, shall I say, some of them utilize the Slumber Quiet Control, which Slumber Quiet, as those fan collectors know, they're, it's known to fail. And then some K55 ones had the cardboard box variable speed, and there are the K63 ones, which were the early ones that had cardboard box. And then there were the ones that were from the 70s that um, they didn't have a tag, they'd either have a sticker or you know, that or it fell off. And those had bell canopy and it had the bell canopy system that didn't have hang troop. But yeah, these the newer ones came in a few different finishes. So there was the antique brass, which this one's in, then there was the uh, antique copper. Yeah, that's what it's called. There's the antique copper finish, which was I think around the 2000s. And then there's also I'm pretty sure there was this like weird like brushed silver color. I'm not very sure of the name. We'll go to speed three now. And the beeps aren't supposed to be that long and it's not supposed to take all that time. It's supposed to be quick. But something's wrong with the board. Yeah, you can hear the bearings. Either needs a bearing replacement or just a completely brand new motor. I might put an XLP in it or a K55 but I don't really know if I want to put the XLPs in them because I don't want to mix a USA made fan with China made parts. That's pretty noisy. With the old board, it went a lot slower, like this was high speed. Which would be speed six. The Broadway Limited is a very fancy fan, and a fan I've been wanting for a very long time, especially the IntelliTouch version, because I've only seen one IntelliTouch version, which is um, Vintage Fans and More's video. Other than that, I've not seen any Intel Touch Broadway Limiteds. Um, well, I think there was another one. Because um, I know Braxton, the vintage fan man, uploaded one at the uh, Spaghetti Factory. That's near his place. But yeah. um, let's go to Speed 4. These Broadway Limiteds are powerful little fans. The Commodores are insane. Uh, this has a um, very obnoxious bearing noise. Okay. There were different blade finishes because there was this oak that this one has and then vintage fans and moors his has like a kind of like a light bleached oak kind of color and i'm pretty sure they made cherry too i'm not sure of every single blade finish but those were the ones that i know of but oak that this one has is the most common one let's go to speed five Bearings seem better days. I don't think this bearing noise is going away. I'll either replace the bearings, but this motor is so old because it has the uh, the first system RM1, first IntelliTouch system. Um, it's hard to find those boards. Um, I might convert this to RM2 with Flick to give it the same options that this one has with the Flick mode and then, yeah. So I'm pretty sure I have a spare Flick mode board sitting around that was from my Panama that I got from the Russian Fazbear. Go to 
speed six. Should not be taking this long. There's a speed six. No, it's just having a hard time. Alright, this is the only way to get it up to speed six. I shut off. Let's cycle through flick mode and that should go to speed six. There we go. This thing's a powerhouse even though it has bad bearings. Pulling this whole room off. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. See you guys later, and goodbye.